we've been able to do this for a long time. I want to give you a short little lesson on the mid plate that's used in a Muncie 4 speed, and for that matter, it's also used in a Super T10 transmission. I want to talk a little bit about why the accuracy of the plate is really important, and some of the stuff that's out there, the pros and cons of the plates, what's good, what's bad, and let's just get to it right now. So the reason why the mid plate is so important is because it basically holds the whole gear train in place relative to the main case and the extension housing. So if the plate is off in terms of thickness and in terms of concentricity, and by concentricity, by the way, I mean the center line of the hole of the plate in relationship to the center line of the holes in the case and the extension housing, and let's say the output shaft seal or the output shaft bore, you want to make sure that everything is concentric, that all the holes are lined up perfectly so that there is no twisting of the pieces because the input shaft is guided by the front case of the transmission, the main shaft is guided by the mid plate of the transmission, and the output shaft is basically held in place by the rear yoke, which is in a bushing. So all those components have to be perfectly aligned for you to have good performance of the transmission as far as it not popping out of gear and self-destructing on the hard use. So what I did was I took some of the plates that are on the market today and did some measurements for you so you could choose what's the best plate for your transmission build. There's several options now out there and I wanted to educate you on what those options are. So back in 2003, Auto Gear Equipment came out with a new improved transmission case for the Muncie 4-speed, dubbed the Super Case. After the Super Case was released, they decided to make, under my suggestion, an iron midsection. The idea of the iron midsection, or iron midplate, was so that we can actually girdle old cases, in other words, it was directly 100% backwards compatible, so the, the girdling effect of the case not being able to twist on the load was one thing. Then later on, improvements to the plate led to being able to bolt a countershaft to the mid plate so that you can now torque down the countershaft to the back end of the plate and offer it more support. Part of the problem with making mid plates is that it's an extremely difficult piece to make. This is a factory plate, by the way, and one of the reasons it's very difficult to make these plates is because you have to machine one side flat, bore it, and then be able to flip it in the machining process and keep the accuracy of the thickness and then do the other, you know, and then maybe finish up on the snapping groove or something like that. But the problem is, is when the flipping process of doing this, trying to keep it extremely ac accurate from it not going like this in fixturing and like this. So to keep the sides pretty much within spec is a very difficult thing to do, believe it or not. If you're using state-of-the-art machinery and state-of-the-art probing equipment in the machining process, this is not that hard to do. It just requires somebody having the proper machinery to make it. That's all. Pretty simple. Anyway, so here's my thing. is We're seeing all these plates come out, and they're varying all over the place. And what I wanted to warn people is that there's some good plates and there's some bad plates. And you need to make a choice when you're going on eBay or looking around on the internet buying the correct plate because most people are not going to measure plates and they're going to just throw them in their transmission only to find out later on they have shifting issues, bushing wear issues, pilot bushing wear issues, and they don't understand why. So I'm going to give you a little quick video to educate you why that's very important. I have four plates. I have the Auto Gear aluminum mid plate that they just came out with, a factory plate, the Chinese knockoff plate that's all over eBay selling very cheap and a new steel billet plate that I actually make myself. So let me go through the measurements of the plates and the processes involved. So here we have a factory die cast aluminum plate. Die casting process is different than a sand casting process because it's a pressurized casting. So the material is quite dense compared to cast aluminum. The pros of these plates are that they're lightweight. There's a lot of material removed in areas that it's not supposedly needed. And that's it. It's a pretty nice plate. It's fairly accurate. Now what I did was I took some measurements all around these plates over here and then I wrote the variance. This plate has a variance of three thousandths. In other words, it goes from 0.4999 here, goes all the way up to 502 over here, 0.502. And the variance is three thousandths on this plate. So the thickness of this plate varies three thousandths. Now that is not bad because the transmission basically you can have about 5,000 variance because you have 5,000 clearance in the bushings in the transmission, 5,000 clearance easily in the bearings. That's not an issue. The disadvantage is the snapping groove here. The snapping groove had a tendency, if you had too long of a drive shaft, 
it's aluminum and the groove pounds out and gets sloppy. And this makes the whole gear train walk back and forth within the groove. One of the reasons why we went to the iron plate in the first part was because we didn't want the aluminum pounding out. I don't know why that happens, but it happens. The other thing is that if your drive shaft was too long, the cross section of this area over here would tend to blow out the plate. In other words, this plate would actually crack physically all around here and blow out completely. So, 3000th variants on a factory plate. Auto Gear came out with this sand cast aluminum plate. It's a really beautiful piece. They reversed the snapping groove to add more girth to the section so it doesn't blow out. But it's still an aluminum snapping groove. So, my opinion is it's still going to pound out over a period of time. The plate has got more material added to this area over here. In other words, it's filled in. So it's stronger than a factory plate. One of the things I'm not too happy with is that they eliminated the gaskets. Now, eliminating gaskets may sound cool, but the reality of it is, is that these plates are held concentric by this area here. In other words, where it locates in the extension housing, where it locates in the main case. Everything else is going along for the ride somewhat. It really shouldn't move much if these clearances are correct. So if this clearance is nice and tight within the main case over here, and this clearance is tight in the extension housing, it's going to clamp together correctly, and it should stay straight, and you'll end up with gaps here. So what happens is, again, if you have this clamping here and here, and this is off slightly and this is off slightly, you're going to have gaps. So you're going to fill those gaps in this transmit with this plate with sealant. And factory cases, if you're using them on factory cases, are not that flat. That's, the, that's, a, that's a fact. So I'm not too happy about using silicone sealant on Muncie four speeds because the rest of the transmission was never designed for that. Overall, it's a good design. I don't think that this cross section over here makes this plate exactly any stronger than they claim to be, but that's what they say. But the nice thing about this plate is the machining. Here we have, I took some measurements on the machining of this plate, and this plate is within two and a half thousandths flat. That's a half a thousandths flatter than the factory plate. That's pretty cool. Next up is this plate that you will probably have seen on eBay. It's a knockoff of the Auto Gear plate. When you look at this plate, one of the problems you immediately see is that it's done on the lathe. It's extremely hard to machine surfaces parallel on a lathe unless you really know what you're doing. And they'll walk all over the place. I'm going to show you something about the location. Both these location areas, here and here, are way on their size. So the plate doesn't even locate properly within the extension housing and the main case. And I'll show that to you later. The other is the locating area is very roughly machined. It's not nicely machined, so it's really not a fit to the case as it should be. This plate has an 11,000th variance. It goes from 0 0.505 down to 0 0.494, which is not acceptable. That's going to cock your main shaft way over, and it's going to cause extreme bushing and pilot bushing wear in your engine. This is a Super 661 plate. It's run on a Haas high-speed vertical CNC mill using probing tools that come in during each operation. So the accuracy of the plate is checked as it's being machined during each operation. Probe comes in. It's called a Renishaw probe. They're about $20,000 with all the equipment. And so it's machined flat, flipped over on a fixture, probed, and checked, and then machined on the other side. This plate has a one and a half thousandths variance. It's the closest accurate plate ever made out of steel. Now the advantage of the steel plate is that it's got good location front and back, it's solid, good accuracy, and you're able to bolt the counter shaft to the plate and an extremely high load. Like I torque these down to 45, 50 foot pounds when I build the units. Now let me show you how they fit on the cases. The Muncie case, mid plate and extension housing are all located with a dowel pin. I put this big dowel pin in here so you could see what it looks like because they're usually smaller than this. But when they machine these cases and machine the extension housings, everything starts off of that dowel location hole. This way you could transfer your dimensional data from case to mid plate to extension housing off of a reference point which happens to be the dowel, okay? So the dowel is very important. But what's very important is the dowel location relative to the center line of the plate and the concentricity of the center line of the plate to the bore of the case, which is located by this area over here. So when you snap in this plate, everything is going to be dialed in exactly. 
If I remove this dowel and put it in the case, this area should not be able to walk around. In other words, it should be nice and true. And that's an easy way for you to tell if a plate is good or not. Take the plate, rotate it so it's not on the case, the dowel, and see if you could move this in the bore of the case. It shouldn't move. It should be nice fit, even a tight fit. The plate should never be able to walk around in the case without the dowel. It should fit concentrically with the case. So what I'm going to do now is try to put these plates on without the dowel locating it in cases to see how they fit. See that they don't move around. So this is a nice factory case, very clean surface on it. And this is a nice plate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop this in sideways so the dowel isn't locating over here. So I'm just pop it in like this so I can check how it fits. You could use a rubber mallet to tap it in. And you can see that this plate fits really nice. It's a nice, good, tight fit. It's not a slip fit, but it's a good, tight fit, which is perfect. Okay, this is a factory plate again. Next is the auto gear plate. By the way, this area on these plates is about all the same. Uh, this is the locating area. You can see the shiny area over here. These usually run in between a quarter inch to 260 thousandths on a plate. So it's important to have that. This fits a little tighter, but that's okay. Same thing. Nice and tight. Fits well. Okay. It's perfect. I honestly think this is a very good substitute if you want to go with aluminum and you don't really have any heavy duty applications. This is a pretty good plate to use by the way. Now this is the knockoff plate that's on eBay uh, with the 11,000 variants. One thing I want you to notice is that this area really isn't machined over here. It's actually pretty rough. Looks like it's got a rough cut. So if I lay this on, it just drops right down. Not cool. Also, look at this hole over here, and I could move this plate. Can easily spin it around and actually move it within the bore. Steel plate. It's nice and tight, nice and solid, fits good. Now what I noticed is that the auto gear cases, okay, have a slightly bigger bore than factory cases. So you're going to see now on an auto gear case that these plates fit a little bit different. But again, this is a nice tight fit. It's going to maintain concentricity very well. This is an auto gear case. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to put in a factory plate. You can see that the case on the, the auto gear case has got a slightly bigger opening. Maybe it's machined better, who knows? But the plate still doesn't walk around at all. It fits perfect. Dimensionally, it's okay. We're going to go with auto gear's aluminum plate. So the problem is, is when you start going off the norm, you know, you're going to run in problems with backwards compatibility. Okay, again, this plate fits in really good in this case. No movement at all. Really solid. Let's go put in that plate on eBay. Now that's going to have even more play now because... So if you've got people that are building auto gear transmissions or auto gear case type transmissions with these plates, it's going to be a really bad combination. And you could usually tell that they're using these plates because or the roughness over here. The original factory auto gear cases were actually machined in this area. So a quick tell is if you get a case from somebody or a transmission built and you see that this area is not machined here, then you know it's a knockoff plate. Also, these plates normally from auto gear had the auto gear logo right over here. So what you got now is people building auto gear style transmissions with these knockoff plates and actually creating weaker assemblies. Here again is the steel plate. Going to put this in. This runs a little tight. 
But there you go. So again, the importance of the plate is to maintain a parallel surface between the case, the mid plate, and the extension housing using these piloting areas. So I'm going to go put this plate in just to show you what I mean. Because the plate can fit flat on the case, like this, and the tail housing can fit flat against the plate. So the trick in machining these plates is that even though both sides are flat, so you got this flat surface against the case and the tail housing resting against this flat surface, if the surfaces are cocked at all, both will still fit flush and flat against one another, but they will be at an angle that will be magnified by the end of the extension housing. So when we're looking at this like this, you can see that everything has to be totally aligned correctly, so everything runs smoothly from the extension housing bushing down through the mid-plate bearing, through the needle bearings in the main shaft, and through the inside of the case where the front bearing lies, and then all the way to the pilot bushing in your crankshaft. Okay, what I also wanted to check is the roundness of the bearing bores of these mid-plates, and I use this bore gauge over here to do that. Surprisingly, all the plates measured within one and a half dial to two thousandths roundness of the bearing bore, which is pretty damn good. The other thing is, is that two of the plates, the aftermarket plates from Autogear and myself, both have a press fit to the bearing, where the old factory plate and the knockoff plate that you see on eBay has a slip fit. One thing I made sure of that when I had this plate made was that I had some reliefs machined into the plate because when I build my transmissions I drill holes on the top so that the both case halves can vent into one another so I have a good balance of venting. Without these holes with the oil on the bottom clogging up the passageways you don't have a good way of actually venting air. So what I love about these plates is that I have these little notches machined in here. I can drill through the case and then equalize both chambers with air relief. The factory plate never had that on here, never had these reliefs in there, so it was impossible to do it without grinding and machining a little bit. And if you notice the Auto Gear aluminum mid plate, their new design, has holes in it for venting purposes. They told me it was just to make it lighter, which is kind of weird, because I didn't think that these two little holes are going to make that bit of a difference in making this plate that much lighter. But they failed to actually machine slots over here so that you can balance both the front and rear case halves for venting purposes. So it's going to require a little bit extra work on your part if you decide that you want to vent both case halves properly using this plate. Otherwise this is a pretty good solid piece. The steel plate is actually made out of a chunk of solid steel that's flame cut to close to the same profile and then it's cleaned up on a milling machine. All the machine work by the way is done on a high speed Haas vertical CNC milling machine with a wrench or probe that actually comes down between each operation and does all the QC and checking before it goes to the next step. This saves a lot of waste in case something is off and you don't kill the whole run with the bad defective parts. Probes are very expensive, a lot of people don't do that, but this way you're not again ruining the whole run if something goes off and drifts off. So that's how these plates are made and that's why they're so accurate. So as you can see the mid plate is an extremely critical part in maintaining the accuracy and performance of a Muncie four-speed transmission in high performance use and even in regular use for that matter. If you want to have long life and wear of your bearings and good performance overall of your pilot bushing and your crankshaft and your drive shaft yoke and drive shaft bushing, that alignment will ruin everything if it's off. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave me some comments.